Hey Skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. Uh, I've got with me the 2022 Nordica Enforcer 88 here. Um, no construction changes to this ski, no shape changes for 22, but it's been a couple years since we did a full review, so we thought we would take the opportunity to chat about these skis again. Uh, last year we talked about the 94 and the 100, but kind of skipped the year on the 88. So we're gonna talk more about this 88. Before we do, uh, Nordica is the sponsor for the January month of our Ski Happy Photo Contest. And you guessed it, they're giving away a pair of Enforcer 88s. Uh, the 2021 graphic, not this new bluer graphic, which is pretty snazzy. Um, so I'll leave a link to that in the description of this video. Um, check that out. Really fun and you could walk away with some skis or 10 runner-up prizes get some Ski Essentials clothing and Nordica clothing and, and accessories and, and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, check it out. I'll leave you with some skiing for now and then we'll kind of wrap this up back in the studio because uh, I'm wet and, and tired up here today. <laughs> Hey skiers, here we are back in the studio to wrap up this review of the Enforcer 88. Um, as I was saying, there's no structural changes to the Enforcer 88 for 2022, just a new top sheet graphic. I do like the top sheet graphic a lot. I think it's, it's the blue is kind of cool, um, but it pretty much carries forward the theme that we've been seeing on Enforcers, or at least for graphics on Enforcers for a while now. The mountain graphics are really cool. Um, so yeah, nice to get a refreshed top sheet for 22, but still the same ski. This is actually the 2021 graphic right here. This is the one that you can win in the Ski Happy Photo Contest. So take a look at that. We love watching the photo entries come in. Uh, so even if you don't win the skis, do it for our sake so we can see all your, all your great photos. Um, and yeah, let's talk about these Enforcer 88s. You know, they, they came out or they were announced a few years ago. 2022 will be the third season for the Enforcer 88. Um, and pretty much right off the bat, it was a pretty heavy hitter in this category. Um, and uh, what category is that, you might ask? Um, I would put these pretty squarely in the aggressive, high-performance, all-mountain ski category. You know, when we do our comparison articles, they're often sitting next to skis like the Brahma, like the MX-88, um, even like RC-186 GT from Fisher. All those skis use a lot of metal. Um, they're pretty, pretty high performance skis when it comes to carving and overall stability at speed and stuff like that. So the Enforcer 88 definitely squarely fits into that category. Um, but I think among that category, it feels a little different, which is cool. You know, it would be really boring and, and not very valuable to us as skiers if everything felt the same. So it's nice having some differences among those skis that you know, maybe they all feel pretty similar, but there are differences among them. Um, so let's just quickly recap construction and shape. If you guys follow our channel or if you are a fan of skis in general, you probably know the Enforcer story by now. And I say story because really all of the Enforcer skis share a lot of the same characteristics. This just happens to be the narrowest. So wood core, two sheets of metal, um, and something that's always worth reminding about these skis is the metal is a little bit thinner. You know, it's not like the 0.7 millimeter thickness metal that we see in race skis and like really aggressive skis like that. It's a little bit thinner, um, but they're still pretty darn stiff skis. Like they're not, they're not soft, flex, soft flexing skis at all. Um, they're a little softer than skis with thicker metal and they're a little lighter too but it's still a ski with a pretty dense wood core and pretty, you know, two sheets of metal can make something fairly heavy. So I think it's still, it's still fair and reasonable to say like it's a fairly heavy ski. Um, now, 
They also used carbon chassis in this ski and true tip. In fact, those were things that were basically developed when this ski was developed. So what would normally be basically a fiberglass layer in this ski has a significant amount of carbon fiber kind of integrated into it, um, which takes the overall weight down. Fiberglass applications can be really heavy, um, partly because the amount of epoxy that's needed when you use a lot of fiberglass. But by using a little bit of carbon in the ski, they bring the weight down. And then kind of the same conversation with the tip. So on Enforcer skis, prior to 2020 or even like the 2020 Enforcer 93 and Enforcer 100, they had more ABS material up here in the tip. Um, ABS material is fairly heavy. So what they did is they extended the wood core further into the tip. Uh, that's what they call true tip. And it basically takes the swing weight down and also kind of, I think it smooths out the ski quite a bit too. Um, so that's construction. You know, I think the important things are wood core, two sheets of metal, that metal's a little thinner. Uh, the carbon chassis is really cool, the true tip's really cool, but I think the, the major pieces of the recipe are the wood core and the two sheets of metal. Now, shape is where things start to get kind of a little bit more unique and at least very important for the enforcers. So if you go on to Nordica's catalog or their website, they say that this ski is 30% tip rocker, 50% camber and 20% tail rocker. And just without measuring, just holding it, that might seem like a little excessive to me. That, that feels a little exaggerated, I think. Um, there is a significant amount of tip rocker and there is a significant amount of tail rocker. Just holding it and looking at it, it doesn't really feel like 50% of the ski is rockered. But when you decamber the, you know, when you decamber it underfoot, the rocker does start like right there. So it is a lot of tip rocker. Um, and then taper is really important for these skis too. So we talk about this tip shape a lot and we, we even go as far sometimes as kind of calling it the enforcer tip. And the idea behind this tip is when you're riding a flat ski, you benefit from the fact that there is a significant amount of rocker and the benefit in that case would be maneuverability. So a little easier to pivot than a ski that has longer camber and less rocker. And then as you tip the ski on edge, because it's not like really abrupt taper, you're actually lengthening the effective edge of the ski kind of the further, the, the higher your edge angle is rather. So that kind of can give the ski two different personalities, whether you're riding a flatter ski or whether you've got it at a high edge angle. And that's pretty much the key to these enforcer skis. That has, that's a huge reason why they've become so popular and why people like them so much is you can achieve powerful, good edge grip, uh, powerful carving turns, but then they can also have more of a playful side to them. Um, so, Let's talk about performance. I'm going to put the 2022 graphic up here because realistically this is a 2022 review, not a 2021 review. Um, so there we go. That's the graphic that I wanted up there. Uh, and let's talk about performance. So last week we were lucky enough to get on snow with Nordica. We skied a bunch of 2022 skis, skied the Enforcer 88s, the 94s, the 100. We skied a bunch of other stuff too. Um, but yeah, it was really fun to get on snow with them again um, and kind of just get a reminder of how good these skis are. And then also, which I think is worth noting, uh, Bob St. Pierre, who is often in our video content, often writes our reviews, that kind of stuff, he has a personal pair of Enforcer 88s as well. So he's basically been doing a long-term test on them um, and they're just really good. So let's kind of start with groomer performance because we often start with groomer performance in a ski like this. Um, when we talk about skis that are around 88 underfoot with wood core and two sheets of metal, we expect a certain amount of precision, of edge grip, of stability, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I think the Enforcer 88 achieves all those things and then some. Um, it's it, to me, you know, being like relatively lightweight, I'm not a huge guy. This ski has like limitless edge grip for me. So this is the 179. I've pretty much, 
pretty much gotten to the point where this is my length in the Enforcer, um, at least in the Enforcer 88, 94, and 100. Some of the, the free models, I like to go a little longer sometime. But this 179, um, it's strong, it's stable, it holds an edge really well. You can ski it as fast and aggressively as you want to. I think what sets this ski apart specifically in groomer application and when you're talking about carving turns is its ability to make pretty short turns. You know, we talked about that a lot. We just talked about that recently with skis like the M6 Mantra and how they use 3D radius and getting a ski to come across the fall line. This 179 has a 16.5 meter turn radius, which is relatively short. You know, I think especially among this category of skis, 16.5 is relatively short. Uh, when you combine that with the tip shape, uh, the way that this tip, because it's not like super extended side cut, it's just everything about this tip is really smooth. The way that they link pretty snappy carves feels really smooth and really intuitive. Some skis can feel a little jerky um, or feel like they require like more more active skier input, like a, like a really strong skier who's constantly going to be driving the ski. These have a smoother feel, in my opinion, really come across the fall line nicely. To me, they have some energy and pop out of them, which is somewhat rare among skis with metal. You know, sometimes skis with metal just feel like they want to stay glued to the snow. Um, these have really good edge grip, they have really good stability, they have really good vib vibration damping but there's a little bit more quickness out of them, um, which I think is really cool. I do think it's possible on these skis to kind of let them run a little bit. Like if you're, if you're staying more balanced and kind of initiating carves laterally and you're not like driving the, the front of your boots into the forebody of the ski and really kind of gas pedaling it, you can make it do turns that are bigger than a 16.5 meter turn. So you're not like locked into just a bunch of short radius turns all the time. Um, it will make a variety of turn shapes or of carving turn shapes, but I think specifically the, the, one of the highlights and, and one of the things that sets it apart in that carving, carving application is its quickness, its responsiveness, and, and just how it makes really round, satisfying turns. Now, I don't think any of that is particularly surprising. Like if you showed me this ski on paper and said, what do you think it's going to be good at? I would say aggressive carving turns. Like that's the, the, this recipe results in a ski that is going to make really good carving turns. It's going to feel stable, powerful, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Where this ski kind of differs from some others in its overall versatility is that versatility or it's its overall performance is its versatility so you can kind of take this with a grain of salt or at least like you have to consider that it's still a pretty aggressive ski but among aggressive skis it's pretty darn playful um I always knew how well I could carve this ski or how well the ski could carve rather that's something I've done on it a lot um, recently, not the day with Nordica, but we went back out. Um, we got a couple inches of snow overnight. They opened some new terrain at Stowe, some steeper terrain. And I specifically wanted to play around with edge release and how versatile the ski can be. And it was kind of a fun reminder for me of, oh yeah, like it's still an enforcer. Because I think I was kind of getting hung up a little bit on the fact that it's a ski with two sheets of metal and an 88 millimeter waist width. And like when you give me a ski like that, I kind of just go to just big high speed carving turns. But there's definitely some playfulness to this ski. Um, that the, just the shape of it, the fact that there's a good amount of tail rocker and that tapered shape, you know, it's pretty rounded in the tail. It, it never feels catchy in the tail. Um, it's pretty easy to release that tail edge and kind of get the ski to to make shorter kind of pivoting fun turns. Um, going back to Bob and the fact that he has a daily driver version of these skis, you know, he has his own, his own Enforcer 88s. Um, Bob is somebody that loves moguls, he loves trees, but he also likes making powerful turns on groomers. Um, and 
you'd be pretty amazed watching Bob ski moguls on an Enforcer 88. Um, if all you knew about the ski is that it's a an all-mountain ski with an 88 millimeter waist with the two sheets of metal, like you wouldn't expect the quickness that it has, or even the forgiveness that it has in moguls. Um, so really cool in the sense that you can it'll satisfy an aggressive skier who wants to make precision carving turns. It'll absolutely satisfy that skier, but then it also allows you to go off trail a little bit, play around on the sides of the trails. You're not locked into a turn. Um, so there's some really good versatility to it as well. Now, I think it's important to still, <laughs> we've said this a couple times, but you, you still have to remember that it is a pretty demanding ski. Um, if you're a uh, lightweight intermediate that's not very aggressive, it might be too much ski for you. Like, could you ski it? Sure, but are you going to get its benefits? I don't know. And are there other skis that would probably be better for progression for a skier like that? I think yes. But an athletic intermediate or anybody from there on up, um, if you're looking for a powerful ski, or looking for a stable ski, a responsive ski on a groomer, but also something with some versatility to it, it's a great ski. Um, I really, really enjoy skiing it. it. It's easily one of my favorite skis in this width range because um, it, it makes me feel like a good skier without, make, without tiring me out, I suppose. Um, so... That's it. That's the Enforcer 88. Like I said, no big structural or design changes for 2022, just bringing back a really good ski. Um, so let us know if you have any questions about it that we didn't touch on in this review. Um, if you have a specific question for Bob, you know, Bob, like I said, is, is spending a lot of time on this ski. If you have a specific question for him, just drop it in the comments. I'll make sure he sees it um, and, and we'll hopefully answer your question as soon as we can. Um, so Go enter the Ski Happy Photo Contest. Uh, we'll talk about some other Nordica skis this month. We'll at least do one more Nordica review, even if it's a ski that we've done already. Um, but they've got a couple new women's skis for 2022, which I think would be cool to talk about. So you may see us talk about them. Um, and yeah, until then, I hope you're getting out on the slopes. Uh, and yeah, Enforcer 88s, great skis. So we'll talk to you soon.